In this video, we will explore significant figures and explain why we use them. So any measurement that we make is composed of digits that we are 100% certain of plus one digit that we approximate. I'm going to show you several examples of what I mean by certain digits versus approximated digits. So why is it that we use significant figures or sig figs? What is the purpose? Well, sig figs tell others how accurately we made our measurement. And accuracy refers to how close we are to the true value, right? There is a true value and then there is a measured value. Any measurement is going to have some error associated with it. So the more accurate our measurement is, that means the closer it is to the true value. So significant figures communicate to others how accurately we make our measurements. Let's look at several examples using volume and mass. The first unit I want to talk about is the burette. Okay, the burette is in units of 0.1 milliliters. So that means that when I'm looking at a burette, and I'm looking at the burette itself, I'm waiting for it to focus, um, you see the tick marks are in 0.1s, right? So there's 32, so that would be 32.1, 32.2, 32.3, 32.4, 32.5, right there's the big line. So these are in point ones. So when I am reading a volume, I'm using the volume 20 just as a example here. If I want to read the volume 20 off of my burette. Now we read a volume from a burette off the bottom of the meniscus. And when we see the volume here, it's right on 20. So I know it is 20, not 19, not 18, not 21. And because this meniscus, this line is right on the line where it says 20, I know it's 20.0, right? So that's my confident value. I know it's 20.0 because this is in point ones. And then I can approximate one digit after that. So if my units are in point ones, and I know it's directly on 20.0, when I approximate the digit right after that, that's going to give me a total of two total decimal places, or in other words, four significant figures. So this volume of 20 using the burette is an accurate measurement. It's one of my, my best lab tools for measuring volume. It's right on the line, boom, right there, 20.00 milliliters. Now let's compare that to the graduated cylinder. We're also gonna be measuring 20 milliliters here, just as a comparison. So when I look at the graduated cylinder, the meniscus is smaller on the graduated cylinder because the tube is wider, right? But if I get my meniscus right on 20, now look at the units. These are in ones, right? So that's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 23, 29, 30, right? This is uh, units of ones, whereas my burette was point ones, right? So that's why the burette's so much taller than the graduated cylinder. So this is in ones as opposed to point one. So if I've got the meniscus right on 20, I know with confidence that it is 20, and then I estimate one digit beyond that. So if it's directly on 20 with um, my estimation of that last decimal place, I'm going to assume it's directly on the zero. That gives me three total significant figures. Now let's move on to the beaker. The beaker is going to be the worst in terms of volume. And beakers, they vary. Okay, Some beakers measure in tens, some beakers measure in twenties, some beakers measure in twenty-fives. So I've got two examples here. This one on the left is in 25s. So if I want to try to measure 20 milliliters using a beaker that is in 25s, well, good luck, right? Okay, there's 25 right there. So I'll just say, well, I'll go a tiny bit below 25. But how much below do I need to be? Well, good question. Okay, with a beaker, you have no way of knowing. I'm a little bit below 25. So I'm guessing that that's where 20 is, but I have no way of actually knowing that. When I use this one, this one measures in 20s. All right, so even if I've got the line right on 20, look how wide that meniscus is, right? I mean, I could really have 21, I could have 19, I could have a whole lot in there. 
You know, there's a lot of variation. And I see students all the time worrying about the meniscus of a beaker. And it's like, guys, your beaker is not an accurate way to measure volume. Where you want to worry about the meniscus is in your, your burette for sure, right? And you can worry about the meniscus in your graduated cylinder too. But if you're worrying about the meniscus in a, in a beaker, that's not going to tell you anything, really. A beaker is just an approximate measurement. It even says it on some beakers, approximate volumes. All right, so if you're using a beaker, the units vary, 10s, 20s, 25s. You get zero decimal places with a beaker. Okay, so I never, ever, ever want to see a volume from a beaker that's got a decimal place because you're not going to be able to get it. What are you confident of? Well, I know it's at least the first digit's a 2. I'm approximating that second digit, though. Maybe this, I know it, the first digit is two, but I don't really know if that's a zero. It could be a one, it could be a four, I don't know, right? So 20 with no decimal place only has one sig fig. So if I'm looking at volumes, the number of sig figs are directly corresponding to which piece of equipment I was using, right? The more accurate my equipment, the more significant figures I have. Let's also look at mass, just as a second comparison. I've got two balances here, okay? This one on the left has four decimal places. This is an analytical balance. Whereas this one on the right has one decimal place. So which value is gonna have more significant figures? Obviously a mass measured here is gonna have far more significant figures and be far more accurate than one measured here, right? I could put something on here and it could say 5.00000. That means I am confident that it is exactly 5.0000 grams. Whereas if I put the same thing over here and it says 5.0, well, it could be 5.05. You don't know anything beyond this decimal place, right? So volumes and masses and any other measurement, the number of significant figures communicates to the reader how accurately that measurement was made. And this is why we use significant figures.